Well done, Apple. Simply well done. Today, iOS 13 Beta 1 was previewed to the world, and honestly, it exceeded all of my expectations. Now, we didn't get a full wide system wide redesign in terms of the icons, but Apple has added so many necessary features and refined many of their applications. Of course, added the dark mode and so much more. So, let's get into the details and cover the breakdown of WWDC 2019. So, Tim Cook began with tvOS, and the theme of this year's software releases seems to be synchronicity across all platforms. Apple updated the tvOS to look a lot like iOS. It's a lot friendlier, more bubbly. It's even got a control center off to the side now, more screensavers, Apple Music, and lyrics in real time. There's just so much here, and they're preparing it for Apple Arcade, and in doing so, they added PS4 and Xbox One S support for the controllers. Seriously awesome, so great work even there. So moving on to watch OS, we got a ton of new watch faces here, a nice new gradient one, modern face, smooth face, and Apple did release some new bands in new colors. The theme seems to be summer here, so you'll see a lot of those colors throughout watch OS. There are dedicated applications now for audiobooks, voice memos, a calculator app with tip calculation inside, just all around polishing everywhere they could. There's a new streaming audio API that will allow many of your favorite applications to run independently from the iPhone. That's huge. Many applications now, in fact, will work without the iPhone. You won't need it to piggyback off of that, and Apple is making it more of a standalone device. Now, in terms of health, Apple has updated a lot here. Hearing health and the health application will monitor more, so it'll give you more of a readout in general. So averages and analytics for pretty much any aspect of health. There's a new cycle tracking feature for women. Hearing health to me was probably the most important thing coming to Apple Watch. Overall, the new interfaces there are nice too, and this is all tied together. So Apple didn't go into detail on every single part, but essentially we're getting new watch faces, new complications, new health features and independence from the iPhone on watchOS 6. So that's all great. I can't wait to try out the faces. I'll be downloading it here very soon and sharing those with you. So there's a lot Apple didn't share and hopefully I'll be able to cover that more in future videos. Now, iOS, oh boy. I was actually very, very impressed with this one. So first off, user base, 85% are running iOS 12 versus Android's 10%. Now iOS 13, the icon itself uses the rounded San Francisco font. The name of the game here is Speed. In every single way, Apple did update it, a 30% faster face ID on lock, 50% smaller app downloads with 60% smaller, more efficient app updates. And all this amounts to a two times faster app launch speed. Of course, I'll be testing that. And regarding device support, so iOS 13 supports the A9 processor and above. That includes the iPhone SE and iPhone 6S, thank goodness. Both amazing devices and fully equipped for iOS 13. And yes, the name of the game with iOS 13 is dark mode. Apple has finally added this long awaited, long requested feature, and there is a really cool implementation of it. The wallpaper actually gets reversed into this dark mode. All of the system elements take on a dark shadow, and inside of applications, it's a near pitch black dark mode. So some of the actual menu elements themselves seem to not be pitch black, but again, after installing, we'll, we'll elaborate on that. Photos application gets a huge upgrade, and that's one to talk about. There's a new share sheet. Just in general, Apple has taken iOS 12 and polished it tremendously in many other areas. Music application now has real-time lyrics on the iPhone as well. Just all around, you can see that Apple is embracing the dark mode, and they've done it right, seemingly. It wasn't just a slap on, it seems to be very well made. And many of the stock system applications have been redesigned, re-optimized, made more friendly, more user-friendly. A lot of the icons themselves you'll see are more bubbly, rounded, and all around it's more user-friendly. Now, Maps. Apple says that they've actually got 8 million plus miles on the Maps application. They've completely from the ground up, redone them using aerial and cars. And in Maps, there's a new binoculars button that's essentially street view, they call it look around, and it's done much better. It's very smooth, the transition from one area to another, you can click on a store, immediately get a pop-up telling you about that store, what they sell, and so on. Also, iOS 13 is built with privacy in mind. There's a new single sign-in made by Apple that will work within applications, in Safari, websites, just brilliant, brilliant work. And if you'd 
like to use your own email, Apple will provide you with a burner. That way the applications never really get your information. HomeKit has been redesigned. Now there's a new feature for security cameras. It's built right in. There's an actual interface for seeing it from your notification center. And this way the actual provider of the security cameras do not get your info. It's all processed on your phone and in the cloud. And forget about unidentified numbers. Just like the leaks predicted, you'll be able to set your avatar and your name in iMessage by default like any other messaging application. Super cool. There's now Memoji updates, much more detailed, like surprisingly detailed. You can get accessories, glasses, change your teeth. There's so much here. And they can automatically be generated as a sticker to use later within the iMessage keyboard, which does get swipe as well. Lots of great updates here. Too much to list in the photos and camera application. Editing photos and videos is much more detailed now. And photos, the views, it's a brilliant new way. So there is this thing called days, months, and years where you'll be able to scroll and on the same day, you know, like in last month or the last day or the last year, you'll be able to see what happened exactly on that day. It's brilliant, especially if you keep all of your photos as you consecutively, you know, age with your iPhone, you're gonna see all of that growing with you. It's such a brilliant idea. And continuing, Apple has added some great features to AirPods. AirPods can now announce messages on the fly, which is a very handy feature in action. And two, you can use two sets of AirPods with one iPhone now, meaning you can share songs and watch a movie with somebody else. Super cool. There's handoff for the HomePod now. The HomePod in general got a lot of features like multi-user support and CarPlay has received its biggest update yet. I don't even have it on any car to this day, but it's got a new interface, sort of a split screen mode here. And you can see a lot on the same screen with suggestions in CarPlay. Shortcuts is a default app now in iOS 13. And Siri sounds different because with machine learning, they have completely changed the way that she works. And that's just the surface. Apple added so many features to iOS 13 that they themselves couldn't cover in this release. It would just take too long. So hopefully I'll get through those eventually. Anyways, so next up, they went ahead and separated iPad from iOS. It's now called iPad OS just because of the complexity of it. They've completely reworked the way that it works. It's very intuitive. There's a new text manipulation system. There is now a built-in widgets view on the home screen. The way that slide over works, there's multi windows for the same application and it just seems to be so intuitive. Drag and drop is much more in depth. It works through many other applications and there's a lot to cover here. A dedicated video for sure incoming, but I love all the changes they've done on iPad OS, including the Files app. So the Files app now gets even more complex. It supports USB drives, SD card drives, and there's updates to Safari with full desktop browsing just scaled to the iPad display. There's now a dedicated download manager in Safari, and you can actually adjust fonts in certain applications now. Not system-wide fonts, but inside applications, which is great. Now, Apple has reworked the input on the iPad on many fronts. First off with the Apple Pencil, latency has been reduced from 20 to 9 milliseconds. Through software. That's crazy. There's a new single keyboard that's manipulable and with a pinch you can get to that screen, drag it around. There's a new markup toolkit, a new way to take screenshot by dragging from the corner with the Apple Pencil on any page, taking full screen page width screenshots, that means scrolling screenshots basically. New text manipulation with three fingers to cut, copy, and undo. So with all that being said, it's just scratching the surface. I'm going to get into more detail here in the next few videos with iOS 13 and watch OS and so on. So Apple went into the Macs and they did go ahead and preview the Mac Pro. Now, at first thought, like it, it looked a little goofy. Once they went inside and showed us the layouts, how it works, the insane amount of power provided by the Mac Pro and the modularity, the upgradability, the flexibility, and the display, you know, I'm just blown away. I, I cannot wait. Now, I still think they should have went with AMD and the Threadripper or something of the sort. Now, since the last Mac Pro was quite the thermal disappointment, Apple certainly wanted to make up for that, and it seems like they over-engineered this thing in all areas. So, in their own words, it's the most powerful Mac ever it's very upgradable. It's got the most powerful graphical processor power setup ever, 1.4 kilowatts of power, and you can get four Vega 2 GPUs in this bad boy using a custom enclosure. Now for video editing, something that Apple created is an afterburner. So that means you don't need to do any sort of offloading for the pixels. It can render 6.4 billion or 6 billion pixels 
all in one second. So essentially what Apple has created here is the absolute best content creating machine, whether you're a video editor, a 3D modeler, just any area, any developer, any professional, you will simply not be able to get better for the amount of money you're gonna be paying here. And cooling, Apple says, you don't have to worry about that. Something with their computers that's, you know, has got me wary, can also get wheels on this thing, but overall they've engineered it with some very crazy structures, as you can see on the front, for maximum cooling. And it acts as a heat sink itself. We have the same ones on the actual displays. So they did a couple demos with Logic Pro and it's really crazy. The amount of things it can do at once and have processing power left over, simply truly stunning. So Apple, well done. Now, regarding the display, absolutely nothing like what we expected. The only comparable one is $43,000, does not have the 6K resolution, and this is a 32-inch display. So in all aspects, they made this the best professional display ever. It looks a little blocky, but that's because they had to have some insane cooling inside of it. There's a nano texture reflective matte coating option, and the way that they explained it, the diffusion process, it's simply a stunning piece of engineering. And it runs at a thousand nits, just on average, and then you can get up to 1600 nits, but it cannot sustain that for long, or we don't know how long it can. So something interesting is that Apple will be selling the actual display stand separately. It is a pretty cool stand. It feels weightless. It's counterbalanced, so you'll be able to swivel it even vertically, horizontally, really whichever way you want. It's a very cool piece of engineering, but it's sold separately from the display. You're just gonna get the display without that. That's a $1,999 option separately. Just the display is $5,000, and then to get the one with the nano coating with the matte display, that's $6,000. So this could run you up to $8,000 just for one. Now you can jerry-rig six together, and there will also be a very interesting version that's a server edition, so you can stack them kind of more compact here. So by all means, it is a good value. You're getting your money's worth compared to the competition. It's better in every single way, but it was funny the way that the crowd actually hushed when they said that the display would be sold separately from the stand. Now, iTunes is getting split up into three applications, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. So you'll be able to use those separately. The actual syncing for your iPhone will be happening in the Finder application. I guess that's a pretty handy solution. So iTunes is no more, and I think that's a good thing. And as expected, Apple did announce a couple other features. Sidecar, where you'll be able to use your iPad as a secondary display and manipulate these applications with the Apple Pencil, with more, of course, coming in the future. Voice control, so accessibility is getting some upgrades. You'll be able to navigate and manipulate your phone entirely without using your hands. That is cool. And some other big ones. So Find My happened. It's a combination of Find My iPhone and Friends in a single app. There is a new location mode where even if your device is off, it'll use Bluetooth pings to bounce off of other devices and let you know where it is no matter what. Super cool. There's now an activation lock for Mac as well. And the project called Project Catalyst, which allows developers to turn their iPad apps into a quick Mac application. Apparently it's really easy and we're going to be seeing expanded Mac apps using this. All right, guys. So there it is. iOS 13, iPad OS, watchOS 6, and the latest version of tvOS. Just simply exceeded my expectations. This is a huge release and I cannot wait to dive into all the details. See you soon, guys. Peace.